This is uh, Olaf. And this is Elise Rud from Amara. And you're listening to Metal Empire. Friends, Romans, metalheads, lend me your ears. You're listening to Metal Empire Interviews, the podcast spin-off of the Metal Empire radio show on Metal Nation Radio. I am your semi-competent and mildly tolerable host, RJ Bailey. I hope you're doing very well. I've got an absolutely joyous interview for you today. This one went down extremely well, and if you're listening to this on the day it's published, it's also the day that... um, it's also the day that the new album came out. Uh, it is, as you've seen from the title, Olaf and Elise from Amaranth. Their new album is called Manifest. It's very entertaining. Um, I actually held on for this one. You know, I aim for a regular release. I was looking at maybe once every two weeks um, to begin with, while I've got a backlog of interviews to do. But uh, uh, I just had to hold on for this one for a few days longer. Uh, because I wanted to, we, we we discuss a particular song that was on the album, and I had the album a number of months before um, it was released um, due to my network of spies, and um, and we discussed one particular song that I enjoyed a great deal, and I knew that if I wanted to fully illustrate um, what you know, illustrate the song we're talking about i should include the song on the podcast and i couldn't of course do that until the album came out because the 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 song which is the best song on the album has bafflingly not been released as a single so i couldn't get it out beforehand so that's why uh this took a while to come out this interview and i uh, i delayed it by say half a week or so uh to get it out to you but i hope you'll understand when you listen to it uh, it's a great interview. There were huge amounts of fun to talk to, both Olaf and uh, Elise. Very warm, very friendly. Uh, my dad uh, said that they seem like uh, very lovely people, and I can confirm they are. They were. Um, we talked a little bit after the podcast, uh, after the podcast, after the interview as well, and uh, it was really pleasant, really lovely to chat to them, and I hope to chat to them again Uh, in the not-too-distant future. Okay, I've said all I need to, really. Uh, I'm not going to waffle on for five minutes like I did, I think, before the Britney Slays interview uh, last episode. So I'm going to leave you with this uh, before we get into it. It's my favourite song from the album. We do uh, discuss it later when Elise tries heroically to teach me to do something and I am unable to do something quite spectacularly. But, you know, she can only work with the tools she's got. This is the track from Manifest. Boom. Everything starts with the fall! Never put my shades on Let the blood feel the irrelevant Do the things that deep insanity Let the big beat back to dirty Get the bullshit, tip tock, 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 Everything. 
so cool, Gigi. What else goes boom? The breakdown goes Today, I am having the utmost pleasure of being joined by Olaf Merck and Elise Reed from the Swedish band Amaranth. Olaf is the guitarist, the ivory tickler, and one of the songwriters. And Elise is uh, one of the vocalists. She's the one who sounds like a woman, unsurprisingly, and uh, is also a songwriter. Um, I, I, I've been listening to these guys for years. I'm actually a big Amaranth fan. Um, I only saw you live. A couple of years ago, um, I would love to have seen you sooner, but it was when you were on tour with Powerwolf and Kissing Dynamite, saw you in Glasgow, and that was a phenomenal show. I was a bit confused at first because I'm used to seeing bands with one singer, right? And that's your focal point when you're looking around. And then three singers came out and I did not know where to look. I was like, this is overwhelming. But then when I got my head around it, I was like, Firstly, impressed that you weren't just all colliding into each other as you ran around on the stage. But also, it was like one of the most exciting experiences I've ever had at a concert. It was just phenomenal, really enjoyable. So welcome uh, to the Metal Empire. How are you both doing? <laughs> Thank you very much for that lovely introduction. Yeah, also. after that, we're feeling very good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, no, yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah. No, we were just, uh, I was just about to say that it's very hot over here and we're a little bit sweaty in um, uh, Dusseldorf doing interviews uh, the whole day. But but yes, sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, no, it's your sweat. It's sweaty here, like in this tiny little padded room. Good God, man. It's just yeah. ridiculous. Um, so if someone had to describe Amaranth's music, I would, I would describe the music as um, like drinking four energy drinks really fast in a row and then just keep going for as long as the album's on. The music's variously been described as like power metal, metalcore, electronic core, melodic death metal, symphonic metal, pop rock, pop metal, dance metal, everything. What do you guys class your music as? Because it's, it's everything all at once. <laughs> we basically call it the music that we like to write uh, i also heard another epithet because that was a nice collection of uh, epithets by the way but somebody called it uh, already in, uh, with the first album they call it death pop i thought that had a nice ring to it actually that's awesome and i love that we've just been calling it uh, modern melodic metal basically but it's a pretty nondescript term so that can um, be, be applied to a lot of different things and i think it's really good to not be too specific when you're um talking about your music i mean because music at the end of the day should not be talked about somebody said that, that um talking about music um uh in the style is a little bit like dancing about architecture but here we are talking about music and it's lovely <laughs> <laughs> see i love to get nerdy like about music i love going down the genre route and classifying things and being like oh that's neoclassical metal and that's uh symphonic power metal and stuff but the more I get into, you know, heavy metal through the years, I'm also very much understanding now why Lemmy would just say we play rock and roll. Like, and that's <laughs> it. That's all you need to know. So and you guys kind of uh, apply to that kind of mentality. 
it's it's metal music. That's all you need to know. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say something, and I want to know how you feel about this because this occurred to me while I was listening to your new album, which I was very kindly given by uh, Emma at uh, Nuclear Blast. And it, let me tell you, that's got some earworms. That is a fantastic album. So congratulations on that, first of all. <laughs> Thanks. But when I was listening to that, I was thinking these guys are like now bear with me here they remind me they're like van halen i've got a reason i've got a reason okay <laughs> so, oh, very nice. yeah. <laughs> so basically not the sound but your music is extremely energetic it's uh you don't take yourselves overly seriously so when there's an opportunity to have fun with a song you inject the extra funness uh, and you sound like the best party ever distilled into sonic format. And that's why you remind me of Van Halen. The kind of like attitude, the energy, the fun, the upbeat positivity, if not the music. How, how do you feel about that? Have you been compared to Van Halen before? I can say that, uh, officially say that it's the first time ever. <laughs> and uh, I actually make a comparison because obviously, uh, um, um, or for example, my dad was a huge uh, Van Halen fan in the 80s. So I did grow up with that a little bit. And maybe it's uh, subconsciously influenced us in some, you know, in some way. Even I don't think so musically. But what I do remember about those videos were that they were having a ton of fun on stage. I remember seeing this when I was six or seven years old. I'm like, wow, that's so much cooler than, you know, than the bands or standing still on stage looking super serious yeah yeah absolutely i think like you're a band i think that grown-ups listen to like because i think you go through an age when you're a teenager and everything has to be like like everything is very seriously and like and if you are smiling you are not doing heavy metal properly and if you are not singing about torment and anguish you are not singing about the correct things and then you get over yourself and you stop being such a like self-absorbed little teenager and you learn to have fun like properly and that's kind of like what you guys are and in a way you have to get over yourself to appreciate your music which then makes you feel like a child because your music gives me that 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 feeling of um wonder of exploration of freedom about what things can be like so so i i just think uh it's you know it's it's the most positive music which i really really appreciate especially as someone with like who has depression and you know is on quite a lot of medication for it when you listen to an amaranth album it just sorts me right out it's like taking the best medicine ever i'm just it puts a smile on my face it energizes my brain and um it makes me just feel happy so thank you for for giving that to us as well well thank you for the nice comments <laughs> it's a really nice analysis to hear I know, yeah, I'm, that's why I'm sitting here silent, because I'm like, just so... It's, <laughs> I'm like, sorry. Really, no, it's like, what you're saying means so much. And I can also um, uh, say that I uh, definitely... Um, I, I feel the same, you know, because I also been through very much hard things personally. And mm -hmm. the only thing that made me survive this was this kind of energy and the positivity. And, like, this is the best, like, you like you said medicine or 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 the the threat towards all the bad and negative things the anger mm -hmm. and the tournaments and the you know instead of like actually um up, lift up the subject that we already know exists mm -hmm. it was for us a much more challenging way to like meet the issues from sure. the, another direction you know absolutely this it, it's a great level of escapism as well like in the same way yeah. that I want to play a video game or I want to read Dune, like I want to hear about the digital world, you know, which is one of my favorite songs of yours. You know, you know, you sing about real stuff. And on this album, uh, Manifest, there is some like more socially conscious stuff um, on there, like make it better. But I think it's wonderful escapism. Um, speaking of the new album, which we should talk about, I'm just gushing over you because I enjoy your music <laughs> so much. <laughs> I'm just um, sitting here. Love it. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> Tell me, like, did you have an idea for this album? Did you, did it was it just a collection of songs to begin with, or um, did you have an overall um, our overarching concept, or even a, a man a manifesto? Manifest. 
Manifest, you get it. Come on, that's good. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> manifest. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there was definitely um, a clear vision from, from when we started to work uh, with things. Me and Elise never really sat down and discussed it. I didn't just think that you know, after working um, together and writing music together for you know, 13, 14 years then you are automatically on the same page because um, I think every album is a reaction to the previous one and also where you're where you want to be heading you know uh, in the future and obviously uh, even if we were brought up some like you mentioned before some more uh, deeper themes and some more socially conscious themes that we definitely wanted to approach it from the different angle just like Elise said that instead of uh, because there's many really depressive ways that you can do it mm-hmm. but we want to for example speak about the you know current corona situation if we touched uh, upon that like we did on uh, you know our first single from manifest viral then we want to approach it from an uplifting perspective while sure. still you know introducing a good a healthy dose of social criticism basically what we are about is to also show the two sides of the coin just like with the digital world that you mentioned that social media is a curse but also a blessing at the same time it can be a distraction for a lot of young people but at the same time they're also vastly improving their own social networks and they communicate a lot more you know with more people than they did before basically so these were topics that we wanted to touch upon and then we also wanted to have a bunch of songs that were not just pure entertainment not mindless entertainment but let's call it pure entertainment yeah definitely i think uh, my favorite pure entertainment song on the album is boom i think that's (laughs) an absolute joy and um my, when I was talking about injecting that extra bit of funness, um, Elise is your little uh, contribution to death uh, growling in there, which was just, <laughs> when I heard it, I was in my kitchen and I was just like, yes, that's what I want to hear from an album. Will <gasps> you, did you, was, um, was Gigi a bit worried and concerned that you might put him out of a job? Because that's a pretty good death growl. And you might, you know, <laughs> replace him. So thank you for saying that. Actually, Olaf, you have to say what did what did Henke say after he heard hear, heard my growl? He actually said that, yeah, it actually sounds really good. Um, almost like he was a little bit surprised, but it's only because he didn't hear the girl uh, growl before. Actually, Elise, um, at one point, she was recording quite a bit of demo growls when she had an idea for, um, for example, the growls to a song uh, called Drop That Cynical. You might have heard it. Um, Love it. Then yeah. she was... Then she was doing the uh, the demo grouts, for example. So yes. I can do it now. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> no, but, uh, <laughs> the, the the demo growls. So there is a version with a uh, lease on the demo growls there, for example. So she had some practice before, and you were got some instructions as well, didn't you? I did. Alyssa Whitelaw taught me uh, on in uh, New Orleans actually after a few hand grenades. Well, it's a drink <laughs> called hand. Grenades. Yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> I know you're in America, but still. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I love it. Uh, that was fun. And Hank came and gave me a compliment. He said, I think your growl, your growl sounds better than mine. On boom. <laughs> impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> I mean, I don't so believe that, funny. but that was a very nice compliment. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's exactly good. That's what he said. He's like, I don't like my own booms anymore after hearing yours. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you do a death growl? Me. How, how no, does someone do it without yes. ruining your voice? Oh, uh, well, I mean, there is obviously a, a vocal technique that can be taught by, an, uh, can be, anybody can learn how to growl. Mm. Uh, it's about the um, airflow. Uh, you should be totally relaxed. There is actually nothing going on in your throat. It's more like a, just add a little bit of vocal cords, but a lot of air um, somehow. Especially the word boom is actually kind of easy to growl because it's just, <laughs> for me it tickles a little bit right there. <laughs> but uh, yeah there is a lot of i think it's called uh, uh it's it's a vocal uh, program called uh, complete vocal training or maybe you know this what is the word of that uh it's kind of new uh, uh, flora jansen does it uh is it called complete uh-huh. vocal i'm not oh, sure God. I, got, I need to Google this, but there is one like word for it. And then mm-hmm. growl is actually part of this now because back in the days it was, of course, you know, a little bit weird. People didn't really think see that as singing, yeah, uh, yeah. or a part of singing. It was just ugly noises, <laughs> <laughs> evil and uh, yeah, 
frightening and stuff like this. But uh, nowadays, it has become a, a, a technique that anybody can learn. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I, I re- yes. Sorry, go on. Yeah, but do you do you know how to growl? No, I can't growl. I'm like, all right. So it's like you open the throat up, right? Wait. Ugh. Yeah. And then, then you let the air just like go out. Boom! No, yep. that was dreadful. Without, with... <laughs> without, the, without the vocal cords, like boom. Boom. no. Uh. <laughs> I feel I'm like I'm being sick. Uh, uh, dreadful. Maybe if I ever meet you in real life, you can give me some uh, some I, lessons. I know how you do it. Yeah, but you know what you can do? You can uh, pretend you're a dog barking. Woof, 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 It's the same. Woof, 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 woof. That's perfect. <laughs> woof. I'm actually, it's funny, I'm actually going to uh, Birmingham today to oh. hopefully adopt a uh, a Romanian rescue dog. So what? maybe, yeah, so hopefully I will go and um, make friends with her. I'm gonna, we're going to call her Mina uh, because she's from Romania and Dracula. And then I can just walk into the pet the pet place, well, the, uh, the, the rescue shelter and just be like, hi, Mina. Woo, 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 woo. Like that. Yeah. Yes. Best of friends. Perfect. Perfect. Congratulations for the dog. Actually, my Romanian uh, wife actually just uh, picked up our um, puppy uh, four days ago. So oh. I haven't met our new puppy yet. Oh. Actually, She also used to work in a Romanian dog shelter. So that's really mm-hmm. nice of you to adopt one of those. The thing is, though, that at this time we're getting a um, breed dog uh, mm-hmm. because uh, she, she had a little bit of problems with her last dog. But that should sure. not discourage you in any way because it was still a very, very lovely dog. So, um, but uh, also nice choice of name, the wife of uh, Jonathan Harker, Mina. Yeah. Well, she's from Romania and Transylvania, and yeah. So there exactly. was the kind of. I'm not sure, like, if it was a male dog, I could convince my wife to call it Dracula, <laughs> but maybe Vlad, if it was a, a male dog, you never know. Um, <laughs> so um, I want to ask as well, like, there's quite a few. Um, as he desperately tries to help you promote your album. Um, there's quite a few um, guest vocalists on this. Um, Nora Lauhimo, who I'm a huge fan of from Battle Beast. Uh, Heidi Shepard from The Butcher Baby, so I'm also a huge fan of. Um, there was uh, Jeff Loomis as well on the uh, guitar solo on the final track. Um, how did all these come about? Because is this is this the most guest vocalists you've ever had on an album? So these are well, the first well, guest, guest artists. But... Yeah, these are the fir- first guest artists that we've ever had, except from uh, some piano playing on Amaranthine on the very first album. Then we never yeah. had any uh, guest artists, actually. It's only been the band members. And we started to open up, you know, our horizons a little bit. Um, uh, I think it kind of started with, uh, you know, a couple of covers. And then Angela Gosso, our, who is also our manager, previous yeah. Arch Enemy singer, she actually came up with a concept and uh, an idea to... Um, uh, to do a, a single and a video called uh, Do or Die, which actually also ended up on the album, but okay. without Angela in that case. Uh, and she suggested that, okay, you do something environmentally conscious. We can record in, in Spain with this awesome video director. And then um, <clears throat> she also, also said, you know, maybe a couple of weeks later, I could also growl on it. And she hasn't been growling on any album for, for nine years. So we were obviously, yeah. you know, very excited about that. And mm-hmm. once you open that, creative channel a little bit you oh. know, then we started to uh, to get a lot of different ideas yeah that's really cool we're going to um to tour with uh nora and uh yeah. battle beast and uh, we, we met her several times before and she's an absolutely lovely person so you were talking to her elise and she was really enthusiastic about the the idea yeah yeah i've yeah, yeah i've i've interviewed her twice two or three times now and she's absolute joy it's like you know it's she, like she's it's like you've known her for years she's like your best friend instantly she's an absolute pleasure uh to chat yeah. to um and that's going to be such a good tour because battle beasts have also got that um like super high energy vibe um you know more straight ahead power metal but you know that's going to be an absolutely killer tour no one's neck is going to survive that there'll be that much head banging it'd be absolutely <laughs> amazing 
That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, 2020. It's shit. <laughs> Apart from ov- obviously, like your album's come out, which is at is coming out in October, and it's a great album, like I said. But like, wh- how how has like coronavirus affected you guys personally? Like, because you can't tour anymore, so how are you able to keep the machine running? Like, how are you able to keep making money? Which is because it's your job. This. Yeah, the um, actually the machine kind of <laughs> keeps on running by itself. At first, when we heard that the tours were and the summer festivals were going to be cancelled, we were like, okay, so we finally get a lot of free time. Um, I mean, we haven't really had a lot of free time since then. Because uh, obviously there's been, you know, the album recordings and there's been the um, promotion schedule, it's been video recordings, photo shoots, you know, all these things. Planning also, you know, for, for the next year and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to our, our personal finances aren't affected at all, at all because there's something that, that's been heavily criticized. Uh, called Spotify that everybody knows yeah. but for us it's been a little bit of a blessing because uh, we are fortunate to to have quite a large listening base for a relatively new band like ourselves and I think that we maybe we are reaching a little bit of a younger audience also that are more prone to use Spotify as a sure. you know listening device let's say uh, so so for us I mean even if we can't tour and maybe there will be some time off now in in the fall for example and that, that will at the end of the day, give us a lot of time to to be creative and then, you know plan for for the next year, and also recharge our batteries a little bit so we can explode even more on the stage. Sure. sure. So um so for us it's it's been both a curse and a blessing. Naturally, we would have loved to do you know the U.S. tour that was scheduled and the European tour that was scheduled and also all the amazing summer festivals. Mm-hmm. We were going to do download UK for example for the first time. So that was that something be, that we're yeah. you know not massively looking forward to, of course. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the, the the good thing is that the entire business is, is at standstill. So now we have some time off. We can be, can be creative and so on without being surpassed by other bands who are out touring all the time. Cool. Yeah, and of course we're very dependent on the radio plays as well. So please play our music a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I play your music all the time. Don't, oh, don't worry yeah. about that. Thanks. No, but that is actually very interesting because we had a very a big radio station in Sweden that played only metal. And they actually got um, shut down uh, after uh, people started to stream music more. Oh, no. So, so this is like, you know, it's a, it's a positive and a, I don't know, it, it's both both sides. But now, that, now I think, you know, going back to radio makes life also much more fun because you have somebody that talks, that you feel yeah. connected to, and you know, all these things I miss a lot. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly, and, and, and just like interact, because uh, I grew up listening to, you know, I watched MTV and I listened to radio, and these were like my best friends. Sure. And uh, now when we're not able to go out tour and see the fans and talk to people in real life, um, it's all everything, uh, ev- the only thing that keeps us alive is, yes, Spotify, and radio stations. Mm-hmm. That's and really interesting was- to hear a positive review of Spotify as well. Because obviously people go, ah, it's killing music. But like, I would not have gone to see most of the bands that I go and see and buy T-shirts of had Spotify not put them in my recommendations list. You guys are a perfect example. If I hadn't heard you on Spotify, I would not be here playing wow. you on the radio all the time going to see you in Glasgow, buying your T-shirt, my Inferno T-shirt, you know, like, that would not have happened. No. Exactly. And what people uh, kind of misunderstand, even the artists, uh, with, you know, what they think is the relatively small payment uh, on on Spotify is that if you release an album, like we did with our first album, for example, it got plenty of plays, you know, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But uh, you see the revenue stretched over now it's been 10 years oh. and it might be 20 and 30 and even 40 who knows uh so the thing is that uh you know back in the day you know 80s or 90s or 2000s if you released an album you would get all the money at the same time because all the rec- like 98 percent of the record sales would be the first four five six months so the artists were really happy because then they had a huge lump sum in their account and then it was spend it on stupid things oh, and then yeah. it will be <laughs> money. but it, with, with spotify i mean Essentially, if if we wouldn't be able to tour, you know, for two or three years, 
Spotify would still be there, you know, creating revenue for, for us. And I think that's, even if you're not earning that much money on Spotify, you still have to consider the, the long-term thing. Yeah. And I think that this is something that people will be a little bit more aware of, you know, with more longevity of Spotify. Mm. I'm the same, like, you know, just slightly off topic with my audiobooks, you get different deals and like there's a per full hour rate. So you get paid how many hours you make or you can get 50 percent royalties. And so, like, I want to take the instant money, the instant pay. But when I've built up enough, I'm like, now I'm starting to take royalty books because like that's just going to keep me ticking over. And when there's maybe a bad month, uh, I don't you know, maybe if I don't get many audio books that month. I still get the royalties coming in from a book that I did five, you know, three or four years ago. So I, I, I fully understand. Oh, okay. Always go for the royalties. Always yeah, go for always the royalties. go for the royalties. <laughs> it's actually also very funny that you mentioned that because, for example, I did, didn't, I was never a fan of reading, unfortunately, because mm -hmm. I'm too uh -huh. creative. So my eyes like float out and I start <laughs> to imagine, you know, imagine things and stuff. Yeah. But the perfect thing for me is audiobooks. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many audiobooks I've listened to while traveling, before going to bed. And like, it opened up a whole, whole new world for me who doesn't like books, you know, yeah. the physical product. So it's very interesting as well, like how, how that kind of, um, yeah, it's not, it, it's, it's good that, uh, like you said, you listen to things that you thought you wouldn't listen to. Yeah. Or so for basically I'm reading books, which I thought wasn't my thing. And I have to add also, it's a perfect argument that um, Elise comes with. And another thing is that you, you can actually finally read, you can learn things while doing other things. Yeah. So um, for busy people, this opens up a completely new um, uh, perspective on learning. So people who are super busy and their parents, for example, now they can listen to audiobooks in the car. They can uh, listen to audiobooks while they are doing the dishes or picking up the kids or, you know, whatever. Oh. Yeah. So this has really freed up a lot of time for, for learning for, you know, people who didn't usually have the luxury of time. Oh. So it is uh, a bigger innovation than people might think it is. I agree. And I got... I don't... Sorry, go on. No, it's like also because I was I was very interested in like uh, psychology, psychology. And there is so many audiobooks about that as well, like how the psych, uh, like mental health stuff and, and things like this, which is actually based on facts and studies mm -hmm. instead of just reading columns in an, in, in an article in a, in, a, in a magazine. You know what I mean? So you, you can actually dig in and find a lot of like very good information about things like this. In, like that doesn't, it's not boring. It's easy. Yeah. You don't need yeah. to go to a shop and like ask somebody at the counter. You can just search for it and you will find it. But anyways, and that's why I want to listen to what you've done. So I will check this out. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you some stuff. Thank you. That's yeah, very exactly. kind. Um, mm -hmm. I, I also, I, I'm like, I've already got a dog. So the, the one hopefully tomorrow that I get will be the second dog. But yeah, dog walking, an hour a day at least. That's an hour of reading as well, which is absolutely wonderful. Plus, oh, if you don't yeah. like a sub, or you want to learn about a subject, but the thought of picking it up, I listened to like a 20 hour book about Lenin because I was quite interested and I would not sit there and read about Lenin. But because like you're walking the dog, it's almost like I call it like brute force reading, because if you yeah. like, like it just smashes it into your head, like you press play and it goes no matter what, you can't put it down. So like it forces you. And then once you're going, you know, you can engage with it more. So, yeah, I, I, I literally have to be paid to read books. I don't like reading books. Uh, but I like making them and listening to them. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm the same. Um, but I'm aware that I've taken up uh, half an hour of your time now, and I, I apologize uh, a great deal. It's been <laughs> amazing fun talking to you. I mean, I'm sure you've got other other interviews lined up, so um, I, don't oh. want to, <laughs> I don't want to run over uh, too much. Um, but I um, I just wanted to say thank you for for. Um, making the kind of uplifting music that you do because like in currently 2020 is a bit of an asshole uh, and so it's very nice to have you guys coming out with another album uh, my you know my favorites on there are boom and uh, archangel which is a, an Woo! absolute banger what's archangel about by the way because in my head i visualize um it sounds like music to demolish soviet statues to in my head, I imagine driving around like Pierce Brosnan in Goldeneye, driving through in a tank, 
smashing through statues. But what's it really about? <laughs> <laughs> I love the interpretation, yes. actually. But uh, basically, it's uh, based upon your countryman, uh, John Milton's uh, Paradise mm. Lost, basically. Uh, because I was really, really fascinated with, uh, with it. I f- finally got through it. It took me like two years to read it. I wasn't reading it all the time, obviously, but it took me a very long time. It's not written in prose. It's uh, written as uh, poetry. And it's basically about the, um, the fall of uh, Lucifer, how he becomes the devil, basically. And it's also being used as a metaphor because a lot of people who are trying really hard to be good, just like Icarus who burnt his wings, then they get too close to the, to the sun and they become the very thing they swore to destroy, if you know what I mean. Uh, stare, what is it they say? Stare, careful how long you stare into the abyss, the abyss That's stares this. back into you, something like that. Yeah. Careful lest monster abyss, hunters. Stares, yeah. Exactly. Lest the abyss stares back into you and you may become a monster yourself. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, pretty clear Nietzsche. Very nice quote. You, you got. I just was like, blah 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 blah. You, you managed to sort it out. I just would said some words, and you managed to <laughs> understand what it was. I just have verbal <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> um, <laughs> you should. By the way, you should have had Paradise Lost audiobook. That wouldn't take you two years. Um, no, exactly. <laughs> but you have to but, read it slower than an audiobook talks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you very much, guys. It's been an absolute joy talking to you. Thank you so much. And the new album is coming out in October. Thank you so much, very much, guys. Appreciate your time. Well, we appreciate your time. Thank yeah. you so much for it talking a, so well about it. Yeah, uh, thank you. I just like, want to say thank you so much for spreading the positivity back to us. And it, it's, uh, it's so wonderful. <laughs> Wasn't that awesome? What lovely people to talk to. I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I enjoyed listening to it all over again a month or two after the fact. Uh, it was just uh, just an absolute pleasure to talk to those two. I will continue to work on my death metal growls, my woofing, my death woof, if you will. Hey, there's the title of the episode right there, isn't it? Um, and uh, yeah, I'll let you know how I get on with that. If If you want to hear a further attempt, let me know at RJ Bailey on Twitter, or go to the Metal Empire. I think, I don't know if that burp was audible. I'm leaving it in. Um, I'm a bit ill today. I'm a bit subdued, as you might be able to tell. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it. I don't care. I, I'm past the point of caring when you're ill. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, on my radio show, uh, Metal Empire on Metal Nation Radio, uh, if you tune in and ask me, maybe I'll attempt to do some more death woofing for you. Uh, God knows why you'd want that. I sp- sounds just a strange thing to, to particular desire. Um, but uh, if, if you wish it to be done, thy will be done. Uh, you also heard a little bit of uh, another song, um, Digital World, uh, at the end of that interview. That's because my hard drive suffered a disaster and I lost... Uh, loads of stuff. Uh, my day job is a uh, an audiobook narrator. Luckily, there was no in progress uh, client work on there. However, uh, I did lose a lot of stuff, so I've had to record my own interview off Mixcloud, which I uploaded it two months ago, which was in the middle of the radio show, which was top and tailed with an Amaranth song. The thing is, the album wasn't out yet when I broadcast the interview, so I had to pick, uh, I think there was only one or two singles, and I'd already played the two singles, and I like to do three or four songs from the uh, artists we're interviewing, Um, so I had to pick a different one, and we touched upon Digital World, and we played Digital World. However, I'm not going to leave you with Digital World. Now that Manifest is out, why not take advantage of another song uh, that uh, we touched on uh, in that interview, one that for some reason reminded me about James Bond driving a tank, you know, the the glory days of James Bond, Brosnan era, um, or the recent glory days anyway. It, it reminded me of James Bond in Goldeneye driving around St. Petersburg knocking down statues in his tank. Not that at all. It's about Paradise Lost. It's going to be Archangel. But before we get to that, I just want to say thank you so much for listening. Stick around. For the next episode, 
It's going to be uh, an absolute belter with Monique Pym from Relica, one of my favourite bands at the moment. Uh, it's a pleasure. She She's Australian, so she just... And a particularly uh, happy, pleasant Australian as well. Particularly nice one. So she's, she's a, she just sounds like human sunshine. It's an absolute treat to listen to. Uh, so stick around for that. Uh, if you follow, want to follow me on Twitter, at RJ Bailey. Facebook at M- Metal Empire Radio. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, hit me up on the Kofi. Buy me a coffee. Kofi. Co. Dot. Oh, night. Don't put a hyphen in your URL. Co. K. O. Hyphen. F. I. Dot com. How has that platform got so popular? Kofi with a hyphen. With a dreadful name. Co. Hyphen. Fee. Dot com forward slash metal empire or just search for kofi metal empire i'm sure it'll pop up there you can also listen to the radio show live uh it's uh all all extra music and extraneous waffle uh it's broadcast on metal nation radio on wednesdays at one in the afternoon gmt eight in the morning et and two in the afternoon cet and we're repeated on saturdays at uh 11 p.m you can tell i'm ill <laughs> and 6 p.m. 11 p.m. GMT, 6 p.m. ET, and midnight CET. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed it, leave a cheeky review wherever you heard this. It would help a lot. iTunes, if possible, but don't worry. Just like, leave a review, share it about. That'd be great. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the link below. All that social media. That's what they say on the social medias. I'm going to leave you with this. Archangel. By, of course, Amaranth. Catch you on the flippy dippy.